hello just to film here uh with another episode <laughs> of the mantis and man movie podcast the christmas episode <laughs> marks christmas episode yeah <laughs> well we're a little late sorry guys uh totally my end but uh we have two That's christmas still snowing. movies <laughs> yeah it's still snowing outside i mean not in florida it's raining actually <laughs> but, oh, okay, fine. but <laughs> close enough <laughs> but today we're going to be taking a look at a very muppet christmas movie or it's a very muppet christmas movie to be more specific and mm. fat man from 2019 or 2020 actually 2020 and mm, yeah it is that was your pick right fat man what made you pick fat man uh i don't it kind of looked like a, an interesting Christmas movie. I don't, there aren't like a lot of great Christmas movies that come out, so I had my fingers crossed that like, okay, maybe this will be the one. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it caught my eye when I first saw it. I mean, Mel Gibson as like an R-rated Santa, basically. I mean, not like bad Santa, but just like a more uh, dark and uh, you know uh, realistic story. It seems like they were going with with trailers. Logan Santa. Logan basically. Santa. That's a yeah. That's a perfect way to put it. I think you put put it like that before that's that's perfect <laughs> but uh yeah so which one do you want to start with or even better what have you been watching lately i think we're jumping the gun here what what have you been um, watching so i i honestly didn't watch a whole lot i went through and i uh re-watched all of like um neon genesis evangelion um oh. and then end of evangelion i've been wanting um, to watch that which yeah, it really, really shot back up there for me. It's great when you like you watch a show and then like in that case a movie as well that mm -hmm. you really liked when you were younger, and you come back and you revisit it and it's like as good if not better not than better. When you originally saw it. It feels like you haven't uh, been lied to or you didn't like lie to yourself through the immaturity when you first <laughs> saw something. You know, right? It's like uh, it's like when I go back and watch like Drive again and again. It's like no, it's still a really good movie. It wasn't just like I hadn't seen a lot of movies before. It's like actually really good still that's that's me but, with um, toy story 2 because toy story 2 is probably still my favorite movie and i watch all different kinds of movies but it's one where i keep revisiting and it gets better as mm -hmm. i grow up so yeah and that's like probably my favorite toy story too uh oh and then yeah. uh i saw the uh, i went kind of on a nicholas cage <laughs> bender i i saw um the the rock not the Rock, The Rock, but The Rock that doesn't have that isn't Dwayne Johnson, like <laughs> Nicholas Cage and Sean Connery. Is that the one I by? Is seen... that Michael Bay, or am I wrong? Or is that Armageddon? <sighs> I get them mixed up. Um, no wait, is that Con Air that Michael Bay? I don't Bay know. Did? I, I, oh not... no, 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 no! It's not Con Air. No, I'm remembering the explosions from The Rock. Yeah, that's Michael Bay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Yep. The Rock by Michael Bay. Okay. There you and, go. And uh, I saw the the Crudes two in theaters. Uh, oh which, really? How um, is Crudes two? You know on. <sighs> It could have been really great, but even though it wasn't, it still was, like, a really fun time. Like, it's super stupid and, like, kiddie and everything like that, mm -hmm. and it's a little long, but it's a, it's probably one of the best-looking, like, animated 3D, like, Pixar Disney-style movies really? made to date, I think. Like, I don't know if it's been a while since you've watched The Emperor's New Groove, yeah. but, uh, uh, like, the color palette in Emperor's New Groove, it's, like... <laughs> that but like digitized and it looks huh. so good it's like an acid trip basically really? okay hey that, that sounds good to me <laughs> sounds right like, up my alley <laughs> they gave cage a lot more meat in the recording booth he's like really going at it so it's a lot Hell of fun yeah, yeah no i, I like the first the, one I, I had a lot of fun with when i saw it in theaters well, i don't know see that was. i i have like a little like kid sister and then she watched that movie like an unkept like uncountable amount of time oh no so <laughs> oh, like, i'm so sorry uh, uh, and then one time, I don't know, back when I was still in uh, high school, my French teacher made us watch that a couple times with the what? French dub to learn French. What? And I flunked French anyway. So, like, I that. <laughs> the crudes so, of all things? I don't know why the crudes, but... I mean, funny enough, my, my Spanish teacher made us watch Meet the Fockers for some reason in Spanish. <laughs> It's... I think it was I, th I think it was Spanish subtitles even it wasn't even in Spanish. <laughs> this is because she was ab wow. you know she was uh she was absent that one day or or like for a vacation or something. So we just watched that for a whole week. That was great. <laughs> oh, <my God>. wow. <laughs> I mean the movie itself oh, wasn't and... great, but it was great to watch it. <laughs> I had also seen um the the two Ghost Rider movies with Cage, which I I like. I, I did a 180 on entirely. Like when I first saw them, <laughs> that was like um, when I was like watching like Nostalgia Critic and Cinema Sims, <laughs> and like, um, even Hishi at the time as well. Hishi, uh, oh my gosh, I never active. even got into them. 
Yeah, the only yeah. one I watched was uh, but... uh, Nostalgia Critic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, maybe you're a Nostalgia <laughs> Critic. Um, <laughs> but uh, I was like very nitpicky and and everything about him. I was like, oh, the Cage is terrible acting, terrible movies. But then like I'm I'm rewatching them now. It's like, man, these friggin' slap. These are yeah. great. Like, <laughs> the first ones, um, the first ones not my favorite i, like I it's heard the lower rated s- yeah the second one i heard is generally just better the the first one has like a really like interesting like raimi sort like a spider-man one sort so of vibe to it, it. it's really? great like okay. it's so it's like really genuinely cheesy like you know nicholas cage is <laughs> about to do oh you, you, what, what what's your question Oh no! I was just gonna. I was just laughing. I'm sorry. Oh, I thought. Okay, <laughs> it's funny stuff. Well, you might you might have a question pretty soon here though. But there's this scene in the first one where it's like Nicolas Cage and as Johnny Blaze, you know, and he's gonna make this jump that's like super dangerous over like mm-hmm. all, like 15 helicopters and like flames and stuff. And so his buddy's like, man. Where'd you get the idea for this? For like putting t- fifteen helicopters and flames to jump over? And then Nicholas Cage he like looks up at this guy, and then it fades back to like his dad. And his dad goes, "Man, it'd be really cool if we did a jump with like fifteen <laughs> helicopters and flames." And it cuts back to Cage. He's like, "My dad thought it'd be cool, uh, you know." And then he does the jump. Uh, oh, so it's like that. And then I don't, have you seen the the Crank movies with James? No, Stephen? I've never seen those ever. Like I at least Ghost Rider one and two. I've, I saw when they came out so no, the them. well it's a very they're i can't remember the names of the directors but it's two they're not neville brothers, dean and taylor guys. right neville dean and taylor yes and, yeah. yeah them and um they uh they have a very like hyper kinetic style to the way they shoot stuff so it's like it's like um like they're on the cameras on speed basically for everything but for yeah. ghost rider they bring like the same style to like this high budget film so it's like really uh, to me it's like a weird like art house movie almost because of just <laughs> how different it is to other <laughs> um films made at the time and everything and neville it, dean only a, did the i mean the, the, those two only did the second one right am i wrong i don't think they no did no the they did uh crank one crank no, i mean two. the second ghost rider Oh, um, yeah, they only did the, the second one, okay, I, yeah. which is weird. I thought they would have gotten the other guy to do it, but I don't know, maybe just a change of pace, I guess. But it's the movie is just fine up until, like, I think 15 minutes in. Mm-hmm. And then there's a, there's a scene where, like, like the ghost writer inside Cage, you know, like whenever he's near evil, he wants to, like, pop out and kill yeah. people or whatever. Uh, so Cage comes close to this bad guy and he's like, he's gonna come out! And it's like, he's, like, he's contorting his face and like screaming and stuff. The whole room <laughs> just lost it when that happened. And like, alright, we'll buckle up. And then the rest of the movie just it never stops. He's like, pissing flames and stuff. I'm like, <sighs> it's, it's amazing. But yeah, that's pretty much what I've been watching. And I watch like some lame movies that are Well, I remember you recommended about. Infinity Train. Oh, did you watch it? I did not watch it yet, no. I haven't started oh, it. Dang it, okay. Uh, the only but, show uh, I started recently was Euphoria. Have you seen Euphoria? Uh, no. It's a little <laughs> bit too much like uh, teen angst for me. Yeah, that's I rich from I someone like saying that they just finished Evangelion <laughs> for the second time. But yeah, I usually don't like that stuff, but I, I, I'm digging that show. I've seen clips from it. It looks very well made, though. Oh, so maybe yeah, I will the direct, check it like out. the it's very stylized, which I like. Like it, it has a style to it that I like. But yeah, oh uh, yeah, Infinity Train. Though anyone listening, please, if you have HBO Max, it, like just go check it out. Trust me, if you'll fall in love instantly, and you'll also support the show because I don't know if they're going to make another <gasps> season, and I really need them to. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I've been wanting to check that out. I saw the pilot way back, and I liked it. So. Yeah. Mm. I will check it out eventually. I gotta get on some animated shows. It's been a while since I've seen an animated show. But, mm. Yeah. Anyways, uh, on my end, I've been on a Haneke uh, t- kind of marathon, uh, watching Ooh. a lot of Mikkel Haneke stuff. Uh, okay. But that's like the main stuff I've been checking out. I mean, other than that, I've seen, I try to see a movie every day. So let me look at my wow. diary. Uh, I've been doing Pixar shorts recently, which are not a lot of them hold up. Uh, I saw Burning recently, you know, Burning. 
Oh, uh, the wait, is that the one of uh, the the Korean film, right? Yeah, 2018, 2018. Well, I saw yeah, you. That's, that's one it. of my favorite movies, actually. Yeah. That was fantastic. I mean, that was one of the best watches I saw in a while. Oh, that was so good. So freaking good. Yeah. <laughs> I love that one. Uh, but uh, yeah, I saw uh, another one. I saw that was good was Columbus, which was like uh, another contemporary uh more recent film i usually watch older films that's why more recently i've been watching a lot of older films uh but Columbus, yeah. that is that george clooney right no no it's it's uh it's by first off it's directed by a video essay guy and it's with john cho i think that's probably the only recognizable name in that whole thing okay but yeah pr- pretty good pretty good little indie film uh but anyways which one do you want to talk about first very Muppet. It's a very Muppet Christmas movie. Or um, Fat Man. I, I really want to hear your uh, reactions to the very Muppet Christmas. <laughs> movie. See where it ranks. The, the tiers oh, I could get of all, all ones you've seen. Heck yeah, I could get. I, I have the data of where that where that ranks. Let me see. Where okay. where did I put it? I have it on my lists of Muppet productions. Because I think apart from Muppets from Space probably my favorite muppet movie okay whoa that's high up that is way higher than i would put it oh my gosh maybe it's for like nostalgia reasons no but, no uh, i mean i, I also it, just like your own i think it's just freaking weird I, okay I I like <laughs> it would have been better if science sono directed it oh yeah <laughs> dude uh no with the very Muppet Christmas movie. It ranks uh, on the Jim Henson list 14 out of 24, and on the Muppet okay. list uh, psh, 10 out of 18. So it's, it's middle it's of the line bad. for me. Not uh, too bad. But yeah, no, this was. I mean, it. I wouldn't call it an average Muppet film because it was f- uh, very crazy, very, very. very it's a crazy. shocker, right? <laughs> it's crazy. This is. It, I think cra- that's like the birth of like the the depressed Kermit. Like after that, <laughs> Kermit. <laughs> culturally so, kermit was never the same he really. was never the same. <laughs> that's a good way to put it i mean yeah he this is this was the most uh on the edge i've seen kermit first off that was one thing that stood out he literally like just wants to kill himself like for most of the movie it's, I, it's I, did he say like, i don't want to exist anymore like like he he's like i wish i was never born, born. multiple times <laughs> When I heard that, when I, I saw wish that, I was never born. Like he's, the way he's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, then he starts going crazy with it. He's like, I wish I was never born. I wish I was never born. Um, yeah. yeah, that that part was again crazy to me because it was it was almost out of character. I mean, like I understood it wasn't. I wouldn't call it exactly out of character, but it was just so uncharacteristic, I guess. Uh, but <laughs> as a, as a whole, I liked I I liked one thing it did was it did a lot of. 2000s movie references so it was like an epic movie or one of those crappy ones uh so like they had the grinch uh they had like scrubs right was it scrubs or er is one of those it was er actually it was ER. Uh, i think, it was I ER. think so I'm, I w- i've never watched any of those so i wouldn't know <laughs> they had fear factor with joe rogan <laughs> i did Wait, was that Joe Rogan? <laughs> yep, Joe Rogan in a freaking Muppet movie. That was incredible. Oh, I don't know how I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably say spoiler warning because we're spoiling some great stuff. Yeah, here. spoiler warnings for, for the <laughs> warnings for both of these. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at one point, Scooter is a stripper. <laughs> I know, like the the intro to the club scene. It still gets me because it's like you have like, Sam the Eagle. He's like these glow stick, rave glow sticks. He like <laughs> summon him in the POV of the camera's face, and you have like, Scooter <laughs> grinding on the bars. To neon lights and kermit's face it's just like shock and horror and, and it's i mean that's my face too uh, but, and it, well and then you have like the weird arc with pepe where he's like hardcore simping for this banker yeah it's like yeah uh john kuzak yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was that uh but that stuff i did like like that stuff i liked but as a whole i felt it was just I wish it did more with it did the structure of uh, you know it's what is it the one where they uh, I guess Christmas no it's a wonderful life where which one is it? is it it's a wonderful life where yeah it's a yeah, wonderful life that's what much, they're yeah. aping yeah I wish mm-hmm. it did something more unique in that department with the story itself because there's great jokes and there's great moments that are different but the story at a core is something we've seen before and then a lot of the times with the plot I saw a lot of uh you know just like sh- just reasons 
of uh you know like why did that have to go that yeah. way like uh fozzy losing the money or all that stuff like all of them to me it seemed like stretches for conflict <laughs> no that was just uncut gems before it happened <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah honestly yeah but i like i like fozzy's like this is how i win <laughs> Yes. Yes. Oh, that, you, I can't tell you how much that was, how distressing that was to watch as a kid, though. Like, my heart really? sunk. Aww. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> to me, I'm like, come get, on. Don't be, like, I get that Fozzie's kind of a goofball. But what is this, on. a Michael Haneke film? I'm not <laughs> it's not it's <laughs> cruelty. Wow. Oh, heck yeah. I like that reference. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, so a lot of the jokes were funny, uh, but I felt like as a whole, the plot wise, some characters felt out of character, and some parts just felt uh, very convenient. And I know it's a Muppet movie, but mm. that stuff does annoy me because there's other Muppet movies that do this stuff better. And uh, yeah, I I was also amazed they had like a like a like an Asian joke and a gay joke and stuff like that. I was just the offensive humor I didn't expect from the Muppets. So yeah, that, the that, that filthy Frank Terror Muppets. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I get what you mean though about the story uh from my perspective like yeah. uh it's not like a guilty pleasure for me although maybe it kind of is but um with no, no, no. it's your if you with like the it, story it's like when, if you compare it to a wonderful life which is a movie it's like riffing on um it's yeah. also not so much that it doesn't have much to add it just doesn't explore the same things to the same level of detail that it's a wonderful life does like it doesn't like oh, no. explore like uh, like Kermit as much as it could have for the premise it has. It doesn't like get into like, and it has such a interesting premise with Kermit of him mm. on the edge and everything about, you know, he lost show and everything, but yeah, I wish it doesn't like delve deep stuff. into the problems that it presents mm. outside of like more superficial stuff, which you could argue if they did, <laughs> it may have been a little too much for a Muppet movie, but too much for, yeah, I, don't... I get it. I get it. But like, for me, uh, like the original Muppet movie delves into deeper themes. Even the freaking 2011 one, which I think is overrated, the Disney one. Oh, I don't know why more people. Deeper meat to yeah, it. People, I don't, I don't get the hype behind that one. Yeah. <laughs> they act like it's the best. They act like it's the best movie ever, and I'm like, the second one's better than I mean, the first at, one. I agree. I agree. M- most wanted, I, I liked more. <laughs> but yeah, that the that. It's side note for 2011. I don't know. Like a lot of them feel out of character in that one too. I don't know. know, Whatever. Seeing all the Muppet movies back to back didn't help my liking Mm. of 2011 Muppets. But anyways, yeah. So uh, yeah, that's that's what I felt about it. I mean, and also the music. I didn't like any of the songs. Like usually, I love the songs of Muppet movies, but I don't remember any of them. It's kind of great, especially like the the some of the Moulin (laughs) Rouge stuff. Maybe that was the point. The way it's shot, though, it's like, (laughs) is this like intentionally supposed to be just like? Uh, like trying to make me feel sick or whatever like i don't know there's a weird reaction <laughs> i have to like the way that everything's designed and the way the camera is like zooming in close yeah. up with these dutch angles <laughs> well dutch wait angle. i think actually i don't know if they were inspired by the grinch in that regard. no actually though because grinch had a lot if, of dutch um angles. uh if if boz lerman's um moulin rouge came up before them that's probably what they were actually trying to parody because if you've seen that it's like boz lerman like great gatsby and those movies he like super oh, yeah, like weird uh like cocaine editing stuff like that i don't know <laughs> yeah a lot of... <laughs> maybe it was maybe <laughs> maybe it was riffing on that uh but yeah so uh with this one uh yeah and also the music fell out of place where it was it felt this level of sentimental that wasn't in line with the movie of what it yeah was it needs to be more <laughs> cynical <laughs> There you go. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's it. Yeah. I, but that's my two cents. So yeah, it was a mixed bag. I'd give it like a five out of ten because I like. Oh, it had Crocodile lot, Dundee like in it too at the beginning. Oh I yeah, I forgot he about like that. Tranks... No, he's in the middle. I thought he was in the middle. No, at he the, was trying to find at the beginning, him. Yeah, that was he one... tranks the narrator snowman. Doesn't he? Oh he shoots... no, that's in the middle. That's in the middle. That's in the middle because the narrator snowman comes back. Oh, he comes back. okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, he tricks him. I for some reason I, I honestly thought that wasn't him. I thought that was a parody no, of him. I, so well, if that was him, you know, it, 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 even better. I'm. It, I don't know if it was him or not. Now I'm. I'm really curious. I really didn't pay much attention when I was watching this. I miss Joe Rogan. I only <laughs> now realize, like, oh yeah, crocodile. <laughs> well, Joe Rogan had hair. So oh you know. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. That would make sense. Yeah, I'm trying to see if it was. Uh, no, I don't. I don't. Yeah, Probably I don't not. see any crocodile. Not crocodile dung D or the crocodile hunter. No. Nope, what no. did you think of like all uh, the the heaven stuff? <laughs> yeah, I get, that was weird. 
<laughs> it's like and the, some of it worked, the, some of it didn't. The meme where it's like the guy like wearing the the apron, and it's like I've met God, and she's black. You know the it's like one of the Muppet movie. Uh, she is, uh, yeah. I guess. yeah, it's Whoopi Goldberg, and the, which is so funny yeah. because Whoopi appears in the next Christmas Muppet movie, but not as the creator. <laughs> so, and then, so like, I don't what's know what the Muppet the, the coffee Whoopi shrub. Is. I don't understand. Like, oh yeah, fruit. they had also the prehistoric butterfly or something like that. The prehistoric <laughs> fly. Like, <laughs> would you say that's the weirdest Muppet movie? Yeah, for okay. sure. Oh right. yeah, that's this very is, sad. I will go me. that most. Yeah, this one, and also if you ever seen Kermit's Swamp Years. Yeah, I've, it's been like ages though since I've seen that. That one's weird too, but I think this one's weirder. Even even that. weirder I think than this that one. one is, okay. This one's by far the weirder. Because it, it again, it had so many elements I wouldn't expect in a Muppet movie, uh, and it was just, it was also sh- like it was shot in a way that was not, like, it was shot differently from the other Muppet movies. I don't know if you got this feeling too. Mm-hmm. Like, I guess it was all those different camera shots and everything, but like it, it felt like it was shot a certain way, which I can't. I could only think of the direction of like the first Muppet did, movie, um, and then Muppet Christmas Carol. Did Muppets from Space Muppets come out before direction. this or after? Before. Before. Okay. Because I think I think yeah. Muppets from Space and then that movie were. I I might be entirely wrong, but that may have been like when they switched from like uh, film to digital cameras, and then they started having like more oh. mobility. Um, like especially, I'm thinking mm. of just scenes. I think I think uh, 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 it's a very Merry Muppet Christmas or whatever was shot on digital. I think it was. Pretty sure it was. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I, it looked like. Yeah, it. it did feel a lot different. Like there were just a lot more angles and stuff going on when you, mm-hmm. especially like I the like Muppets Take Manhattan era of Muppet movies and stuff. Yeah. There's a they they all follow like the same kind of composition textbook set exactly. by yes. the first one. I think it's because yes. they they were more limited in how they could shoot things mm-hmm. probably. Now probably, they could just yeah. like you know erase whatever they want that's like manipulating the muppets so you don't have to worry too much about that. Exactly, yeah. Uh and you know it's funny cuz you brought up muppets from space and that and this one were from a weird time in the muppets because it was made outside of Disney. Mm. And it was when Disney was trying to buy the Muppets. That would explain uh, why they're a little you, bit like more wild with the subject matter. Exactly. That's why. Uh, yeah, it feels like uh, this one and, and from Space has uh, some more adult parts. Mm. I guess adult. It's like you know, I think all the Muppet stuff is adult, but it, like more crude, I guess, humor. It, yeah. And because like the '90s movies, so like Muppet Christmas Carol and Muppet Treasure Island were made in Disney, mm. even though. Muppets weren't owned by Disney then. Right. But yeah. So interesting stuff. Uh, a lot of similarities to uh, Muppets from Space. Maybe we should check, take a look at Muppets from Space sometime. That's a, I got to rewatch been, that sometime. Been since I've seen it as well. We, maybe that and uh, <laughs> and the Kermit's uh, Swamp Years. It's swamp Years. Yeah. Well, anyways, what would you rate this movie? And you know, it's it's your um, opinion, to be honest. Oh, sure. Like I don't know, probably like an eight. <laughs> hey. Okay. Dude. Awesome. Pretty, awesome. pretty much. I don't know. That, wait, what's hey, uh? What it. are movies that we've? Re- wait, uh, yeah. On the level, that's just, this is like on the level of Perfect Blue and Cold Fish for me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So you like this miles better than Lolita? Um. Yeah. <laughs> like again, as long yeah. as it's not boring, I'll I'll eat it up. Like, hey, uh, no, dude. All the power to you. All right. So next is Fat Man. <laughs> Fat man. That was your pick. <laughs> Introduce it. <laughs> um. Well, I think I already did a pretty good job there. But uh, <laughs> Fat <laughs> Man right. is Fat Man. Oh man, I don't know. It's uh, it's Lo- Logan Santa. I don't, whatever. That's Logan Santa. I mean, that's the best way to put Logan it, Santa. Logan. I mean... Well, I don't. Know. It's a. Uh, <laughs> it's a very realistic take. Realistic question mark in parentheses take on. Uh, Santa, <laughs> it's kind of like uh, feels a little bit like you know Cohen's brothers almost, uh, sort of like you know very darkly oh, funny, a little feeling. bit like some surreal aspects to it. You know, there's a there's like a terrible little kid uh, who uh, gets coal from Santa. You know, after he like uh, threatens to like uh, barbecue a little girl with uh, electric prongs and a yeah. motor, uh, like or something, <laughs> and so he gets coal for Christmas, We're beating him in the 
science. Oh yeah, fair. for beating for beating this kid in like the science fair, and so he uh, <laughs> and he belongs to a rich family, so he has like this contract killer working for him. But he he gets coal on Christmas, and like he runs out, and he's like, "You messed up big time, fat man!" And then he uh, <laughs> and he, like he calls like Walter Goggins, who's basically just playing Walter Goggins, uh, who, uh, the hit man. Basically, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Walter Goggins just is a hit man on the side. Only he only operates down south though. But he, oh yeah, <laughs> so he calls him up, and he's like, "I want you to bring me the fat man's head," you know. Uh, and Walter Goggins, he was, he like was mistreated as a kid by his parents, and like his Christmas wish from Santa was to like I think kill or replace his parents, but Santa couldn't do that, so he holds yeah, a, replace his he parents. holds a grudge against him. So uh, he, like he co- <laughs> he collects like Santa paraphernalia from children and and the like, grown adults who need money and everything. Uh, so he has like a vendetta there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he's on his yeah. way to go get Santa. Santa. Uh, it's been a terrible couple of years and he has to work with the he has to take a contract with the US military to get <laughs> the US money. Military. Um I'm surprised <laughs> it's the US military. Like, like why not like and, like how did they get to him? That even you know I literally did not even think about that cuz it is very seeped in like the US military and the I US feel like, government mm, like I wonder where this movie got some of its funding from. <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> but yeah fat band uh yeah <laughs> i was uh, i was surprised because i liked it more than i thought i would <laughs> mm-hmm. i i was worried i mean seeing the trailer it was an interesting concept but i'm like there's no way they could pull this off and keep that i mean i like the dedication to the serious tone that's probably my favorite part of the movie is how dedicated they were to keeping this straight faced oh yeah it, which it would lead to comedic cheek, moments like, at all through the whole thing I like that. I actually like that. I like. I like. I like what they did there with that because it was. It was. It was. They took it seriously, mm. and I think that took a little bit of dedication. I mean, it took a lot of dedication, uh, but because they took it seriously, I do think a lot of the moments, of, a lot of the actual parts of the movie, so like the characters, mm. I think are lacking in that regard. It, it could have been What'd longer. For sure, I think because you could have just yeah. I think it could have been even because if I mean sorry to interrupt, but it feels like that that whole conflict and everything is built up to last maybe fifteen. It kind of breezes yeah. by, honestly. 20. Like um, like you can say whatever you want about this yeah. movie, it doesn't drag like at all. No, no, it's pretty tight, pretty tight. Uh, the the editing pretty too. Tight. I'm thinking of like the the montage of Walter Goggins in the car. Like um, when they mm-hmm. when they cut back to him and like he's playing like different songs on the radio with each different cut. And uh, at first I thought yeah. like, okay, this is kind of interesting. And then like you, like they don't show it too much. It's just a view from like the backseat of the, like the windshields, what he sees, but like they show him pulling yeah. up to McDonald's and then they show him eating the burger. Uh, and I just lost it because it's such a, a <laughs> subtle cut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there, there are some funny moments like throughout the mm-hmm. movie. Like I, I think the seriousness of, okay, uh, you know, Santa has to work for the military but it's such a ridiculous a premise though where it's like it, it needs to be long enough <laughs> to develop this more because like no yeah. matter how serious it is if it doesn't have enough depth to it when you go to tell someone yeah santa has to sign a contract with the u.s military oh god what am i talking about is this a comedy or not like it needs yeah. to legitimize itself more even though it did take itself seriously like if it if it had like mm-hmm. a whole like extra 40 minutes I feel like the I think there's like 40 minutes of missing content here. Yeah, like to me, it, it, it what I what was presented was interesting, but was not delved into, and it felt like it was lacking on characters. And maybe making it longer would have fixed that. Mm. I also think this is very petty of me, but with. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, with Christmas movies, I because I over the holidays I'd watch Christmas movies, and usually they're all like older movies, like you know the first two Home Alones, mm-hmm. uh, the first Santa Claus, and then like Guilty Pleasure, like the other, like the second Santa Claus movie. But, um, <laughs> Is that the one with Robo Santa? Uh, Robo Fascist Santa. Yes. <laughs> and, um, Dude. And then oh like gosh, and then, like Martin some Short others, Die Hard. Uh, but what yeah. <laughs> uh, part of uh, or even like a Christmas Story, basically. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Although, Classics. The, like, obviously, they're not as great as they're always hyped up to be, but they're still fun movies. Oh, well, that's with any classic oh, yeah. movie. Well, you know, a lot of them. A lot of them are like that. Uh, 
yeah i mean for me personally like i a lot of those plus like the rankin bass mm. ones so like i love like the year without santa oh, claus yeah. and rudolph and all those yeah i watch those but whole, every year i think though what helps make them watchable sort of like maybe it's a subliminal mm-hmm. thing like around the holidays like people have been watching these movies since like i don't know like the 80s like like 41 years like every year mm-hmm. i feel like aesthetically what makes them watchable like Chris Christmas it isn't something that gets dated it's a very timeless thing this is very nitpicky of me but if fat man was shot no, on no, film <laughs> i feel like like hey. i feel like it would have like looked more timeless cuz i i really i i get what they were kind of going for like this flat very serious digital look mm-hmm. to it but i i can't help but think like you could still kind of get that aesthetic, but if you if you shot it on film where it has like more this more lively, timeless kind of warm film like feel to it, I feel like it actually would like even by a little bit, I think it would be better in that regard, and it would be something that visually That's... you could see people like watching <laughs> around the holidays. But instead, it just kind of looks like your I don't know your av- it looks like your average like digital revenge flick that might even just go straight to DVD pretty much. I no, I love that you brought that up because that's something that not even I put two and two together. But that's such a good point. That is such a good point. I think that's a that's, that's just a nitpick. fact. A it's not even. Point. I think that's. <laughs> I, I wrote. I think that's yeah. Like I I it does feel like something was missing here with, with this movie in in general. Of like how it was directed. Like there were some interesting shots, but to me it was very almost. It's it very of very the bland. times, like of, of it was, was the, the way it shot, like that that style, yeah. like um. I, I can't even like name mm-hmm. movies really because the ones I've seen are so generic. But like I don't know, I, I'd say yeah, pretty it looks much. Boring to me. It, it's uh, actually it reminds me a lot of like uh, the movie, the other movie Mel Gibson was in like back in 2017 called Blood Father, which was terrible, but it was shot pretty much just like that. <laughs> I see Blood Father. Yeah, I've never even heard of that. Was wasn't he in was Bone Tomahawk? No, that was he was in, uh, that was Kurt Russell. That. You got to check that out though. That's by uh, Craig Zoller. Oh, okay. Yeah, let, like that's a good Rollin one. Rollin Subluck ninety nine, Dragged Across Concrete. Oh yeah, um, I know you love that one. Yeah, those yeah, are I want to see all those of those. Good, those, those are some I good wrecks, but. Uh, oh, it was oh, Hacksaw, yeah, Hacksaw Ridge. Sorry. Ha- yeah. Well, he directed that. He isn't in it. Yeah. Oh, he's not in it. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. He just directed it. Okay. I see. Uh, was that one well, any good? It certainly didn't deserve the Oscar for best editing, but uh, well, if it won, <laughs> I think it won it. Yeah, but uh, it's okay. It's pretty. It's pretty good as far as war movies go. You, I don't know. You can't really go wrong by watching it, but you can certainly do better. Um, yeah, I see. I see. I see. But, uh, yeah, but yeah. check it out. Dang it, I lost my but point. You said you wrote. Oh something yeah, I for wrote. It. Uh, yeah, you said in you my, wrote something. In my letterbox review, which is very short, I had written, I had written. I had written <laughs> oh, just I didn't even that, see it. <laughs> you know, it has to be shot on film for it to be timeless as a Christmas movie. These are just the rules, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, it's a good. Point. That's pretty much my, my thoughts on it. I, don't, I I would have loved to see um more of like the realistic mythology like behind like the the elves and santa like yeah. like get, if you're going to, like, logan, to loganize santa he has healing powers like show <laughs> us his show us his healing powers like show us uh, <laughs> show us like, more like with that 40 extra minutes what i would do is i would oh oh so ahead. so the no, oh, no no sorry to interrupt sorry to interrupt sorry to interrupt uh so yeah with the healing powers thing, okay, because it felt like he like legit. I thought like it would have been end, better if he just, just came back. died so, like, at the end, almost. Yeah, I know. That's what I thought. I thought that I if they did that, it was I think a bit, I would have uh, maybe better. Yeah, oh, I, it, it would have been a bit more gutsy. I I think also it's just like um, I don't know if <laughs> give it a really good no country for old men ending. You know, <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like <laughs> nice, Walter. Nice. Like, I like Mel Gibson, but I think Walter <laughs> Goggins. For as stereotypically, you know, he's cast. I think he's a better actor than Mel Gibson. And I think, like, in those moments, like, after he killed Santa, mm-hmm. I have no idea what the script was saying, or, like, for him to do. But, like, his, like, facial expressions mm-hmm. and then the way he's, like, kind of hunting down Mrs. Claus. I don't know. To me, that, like, that was, like, the most impactful moment of the movie after, like, he shoots Santa in the head and he's, like, going into the house and stuff. It's, like, just Walter Goggins' face and, like, how quiet it is and everything. I mean... In, yeah, I that's on a deeper level for me. That whole like you know mm. the whole showdown was the most interesting part of the movie. Uh, but 
Uh, one thing I wanted to say was, uh, th you mm -hmm. know, the mythology of the elves. I mean, they kind of they they touched on it very briefly, where they're like, oh, they eat sweets or whatever, like they yeah. have an all carb diet or whatever. But well, yeah, I, I kind of wish they are they like, like went oddly more into that too. the like, filmmakers or whatever, oddly like buddy buddy with the American military through like the whole thing. It was like it, it felt a little yeah. weird. <laughs> Like a little, little weird. <laughs> it wasn't like critical. No, I was like, man, these way. military like, guys sure saying? are wholesome, you know. <laughs> or whatever. Not that like every movie <laughs> with the military has to be a scary yeah, and, uh, particular military or anything. I just thought like there would be more conflict between Santa and the military. At the end, he seems like, well, may as well sign the annual contract with the U.S. military. Seems pretty deep. Seems like decent <laughs> folks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe they should have touched on that more then uh, that's just that and and if that would there be was just like less that would have been an like interesting storyline less buddy but like if there's just more gruff and like there was just yeah i don't know to me they they felt very disposable well, in that at way the end, felt definitely like they disposable. put them in just so walter yeah. goggins could take out some people it, yeah like to me, it felt like when I saw like how he like took some of them out, like it felt like me. Okay, were they just doing all this military stuff so that we could get some action I mean, before he? Maybe actually I'm a sadist, Santa, but like, I feel like it also would have been more impactful if he was just like mowing down like elves instead of the U.S. military. Yes. Okay. Okay, that's awful. But it's yes, awful. I was but yes, the same thing. I'm like like to see that. Yes. <laughs> it's like my my idea it would have been more fact I thought that in during the movie I'm like why like there's no See, I don't think I there's any built it up shot. more like more mythos yeah. like with those extra 40 minutes I would have had like about like 10 minutes dedicated to like the conflict with the military and like the military actually like had elves of their own that they had like trained in special forces and oh, they have like the elves shit. go to the north pole Dude, with some like amazing. grown up people and then like the elves <laughs> like okay you guys yes. have to wear this military protective stuff some of the, the elves so and then like just a couple businessmen and then like the one general and then like part of like the elf force <laughs> that the, mil the u.s military has that's how they that's even knew amazing. how to get to the north pole in the first yeah. place and then um and then like yeah. uh, or something like that and then like when walter goggins shows up then he's just mowing down the elves and it's like that and then like they don't they don't know how yeah. to fight the ones that do they're short like there's not a lot going on there and then Hell yeah. it, i don't know it just makes it more interesting to me nope that yeah that that sound more interesting than what they actually did <laughs> so yeah well anyways what would you end up rating it immediately after finishing it i was kind of hyped just because like it's an R-rated Santa movie with Mel Gibson. Like initially, like the 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 high after seeing it, I was thinking like, oh yeah, like strong strong seven. But then um, I don't know. After like stepping back and like thinking about it, it's like in the high is like fading. It's like ah, uh, I don't know, like light six. I think maybe maybe even like a, a five. It seems kind of unfair. I don't know. Like it's it's different. And oh, yeah. I don't know if I'd watch it again for Christmas, but I would love to watch it with, like, family and get, like, a row out of them just to see, like, what their reaction is. <laughs> so it's a good movie for something oh, like yeah. that. And, like, I don't regret, like, spending $5 to rent and, you know, watch it. So Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm conflicted because, yeah, I, like, I almost gave it a 6. I almost gave it a 6, but I'm like, mm. I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't regret watching it, but, like, mm, it didn't do too much for for me with what was present like it could have been really it could have been really bad shit or it yeah. could have been like more interesting for what they presented with which seemed uh for that first uh mm. two acts it felt just not mm. as creative as it could have been with such a topic and and everything it, it felt not as deep yeah. as it should have been for it to work so okay. yeah i'd give it like that's a five that's I'd give fair it a five. yeah yeah but uh yeah, anyways, we got to recommend a movie for next Ooh, week. So what do you got? Uh, well, I can't, well, it's too... I've been like getting so hyped for the new Scion Sono movie, Prisoners of the Ghost Land, with more information that comes out. <laughs> Is it still I, too I, soon? Let me, let me look it <laughs> when up. does it come out uh, again? I think it comes out in, um, in uh, February, maybe. Maybe? Huh. I think so, but um, it. Let me search up. It, it might come out in February. I, I'm trying to find. Prisoners of Ghostland, January. Oh no, that's Sundance. Damn it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't. It doesn't have a release date outside of 
um, for Sundance. But um, I like though it's been acquired by RLJE Films, who like uh, put out like uh, Mandy, Color Out of Space, although like uh, Spectre Vision like was responsible for a lot of that too, like the Elijah Wood uh, production company as well. But um, oh, this uh, okay, like I have there's more of the synopsis available now. Like uh, uh, so, like they have. You know, Nicholas Cage and uh, so- Sophia Botella's Prisoners of the Ghostland follows a bank robber, you know, Cage, freed from jail by a warlord to find his granddaughter. However, and this is the best part, he's strapped into a leather suit that will self-destruct after five days unless he returns with the granddaughter. <laughs> so to me, to me, what? it's like, it's fun. Like, they could it's even amazing. have just like a, an explosive around his neck, but the fact that it's a leather suit that will explode, somehow that just makes it better. That's incredible. And, um... Like, if I hadn't seen Cold Fish before, I don't yeah, know if no, I'd be as amazing. hyped. But to me, this could be, like, this is, like, Nicholas Cage, like, <laughs> fully returning back into, like, the, like, real, like, indie land since Mandy. Because, like, I mean, I know, like, Richard Stanley came yeah. back after the Di- uh, Island of Dr. Moreau, you know, the terrible, like, uh, Marlon Brando movie from, like, the 90s, like, way back. That was that wasn't his last back. movie. And he did uh, Color Out of Space with Cage. But, um, like, I don't know. To me, it's, like, Panos Cosmatos with uh, with Mandy, and then now this. I feel like this could be like Cage's best film and performance since Mandy. And I'm like, I'm like getting, I'm getting pumped for this one. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I mean, dude, I we gotta see Love Exposure sometime. I gotta recommend that one because that's his other like Sion Sono's other mm-hmm. like, super popular movie. Uh, but yeah, but, no, <laughs> I'm hyped for this one, and I'm amazed. You said Sofia Butella. Nicholas Cage, like they got. I thought for some reason I thought this was just going to be some, uh, no. like uh, directed DVD, but it, it does feel yeah. like a well, indie and again since it's Sono like, as well, behind. like there's there's like a heft behind like the the director, but you know doing it as well. So I'm mm-hmm. I'm very excited. Yeah. Although I guess we can't immediately watch it though, <laughs> so I have to come up with something else. So yeah, I'm looking like it says Sundance January 31st. So that's probably someone drop the summer. screener, please. I'm dying here. <laughs> uh, let's go to the good old watch what, what do i i don't have one on letterbox so i have to go Heck to my yeah. imdb one which becomes the app becomes increasingly more difficult to uh, na- navigate with every update uh, <laughs> um, oh no. the I think I, I got know, mine I I'm, This is a joke one, but like uh, the Italian movie with James Gandolfini has like this terrible poster for it. I'm, I'll watch it on my own. The Italian what movie. What is it called? <laughs> no, oh, that's it's not literally what it's called. It's called Italian <laughs> movie. And just like a terrible JPEG. Oh, of, just like, Italian James movie. James Gandolfini's face with like <laughs> sans font on I'm... it or whatever. Well, okay. I don't know if I want to waste like... my, my Wait, pick on that one. What the heck? Though. Oh, this is a good well, pick. We'll though. do it when right, we have right, well, uh, like yeah, another pick, pick Italian movie. Uh, let me hear your. That's pick good. First. That's good I, yeah. I have this watch list pulled up. Oh, I was gonna do. Well, have you seen uh, Cache? No, is that is that Hanaki? By Hanaki. Okay. Yeah. That let's let's do that yeah. one and then. Uh, I'll do Cache. Yeah. Is this one of the few Hanakis I, I haven't seen? One that I think similar yet. from previews I had seen. I never got around to watching it. Would be a uh, Fox Catcher with. Um, Steve Carell and uh, uh, and Channing Tatum. Oh, you want to do Fox that? Catcher? Okay, that's, that's nope. Pr- oh, it has Mark it. Ruffalo too. The Everyman, um, Mark Ruffalo. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this, this was getting a lot of hype back when it came out in 2014, but I don't think it really like got anywhere. Kind of like flew under the radar, sort of. Or it was not. Well, I remember because like it was such a transformation mm. for. Steve oh yeah, Carell, he did. Right? He did get. No- I can't believe this. I, I thought Steve yeah, no nominations. Yeah, it actually. Yeah, yeah he did get nominated for uh, lead. Steve Carell and people are like making fun of his prosthetic nose a lot. But um, yeah, I think. Let, yeah, let's watch <laughs> this guy. I've been wanting to see this for a while, and I do I'm need to see for, more yeah. of Michelle. Yeah, I, I've never or seen Ma- it. Michael Haneke. I need Mikhail to see more Haneke. of his stuff too. No, just Michael so. Haneke. <laughs> Mikhail, I say Michael. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mikael. All right. Well, I think that's it for this episode. So, Cache mm. and Foxcatcher, go check those out for next episode. Warning. I mean, Hanukkah is pretty intense with stuff, so I don't. I expect Cache to be a pretty super <laughs> sure. intense movie. If but, you made uh, it f- through Coldfish, though, I that. feel like you can make it through anything. Heck yeah. 
<laughs> I will. I, I cold fish. I don't like check out the Seven of Continents sometime. Okay. That one's very intense by Hanukkah. But yeah, anyways, uh, well, that's it. Anything uh, else? Ooh, no, that's it. Watch out for black ice on the roads, I guess. <laughs> yeah, where can people uh, find you? Idaho. By the way? No. I I'll, I have I have a, a YouTube channel with no content on it. I don't want to plug it yet though cuz I, I only plug it when I put content on it. But I will put content on it soon. I got like this cool like Elgato like fold up like green screen thing. If it's your same YouTube one, I think I've been putting uh, that It might screen, be, so. I don't know. But I'll, I'll officially plug it when I put some stuff out. So I'm looking forward to that though. But uh Okay. Yes. All right. All right. And you guys can find me on Just Too Good on YouTube. But yeah, Anyways, that's it for this episode. See, See you guys later. Bye. Bye.